Cockroach Kid Productions. Russia suffered from many geographic problems simply because of its sheer size. It spanned 6,000 miles east to west and 2,000 north to south. Because Russia was so large, they had severe problems with communication because it crossed through many different time zones. The climate in Russia also made it very difficult to grow crops or to have a good coastal trade system. There were extreme climates in Russia, which meant that there was not one port that was ice-free all year round, which made it very difficult to trade. It also meant that 150 years before 1850, it was impossible for humans to live there. Another problem was that Russia was separated into east and west because of the Ural Mountains. This created the fertilisation problems. This piece of land, which was infertile, was called the tundra, and it was completely impossible to farm on. The west of the mountains was very fertile, compared to the east, which wasn't at all. Russia was very much against the Jews. They treated them as subhuman. The Jews were restricted to the Jewish paler settlement. They had restrictions in education, and they were not allowed to live in proper Russia. The next up from the Jews were the serfs. Serfs were slaves who had very low living standards. Effectively, they were peasants. Their life expectancy was a mere 35 years. The gentry confirmed their right to physically punish or send their peasants that they owned to the army. Nicholas I restricted passports, making foreign travel impossible. He wanted to try and stop the spread of democratic ideas. When he died, less than 1% of the population was enrolled in schools. In Russia's sixth university, only 3,000 500 students attended. Another problem that Russia faced in 1853 was the military. The conscription to the army was for 25 years and they were taken against their own will to faraway parts of the empire. The soldiers that did survive were left with nothing. They weren't given any money, they had no houses. When they left 25 years before, their wives were pronounced widowed and were allowed to marry again. All the soldiers were treated in a brutal manner and over a million of them died in the peaceful time when Tsar Nicholas I was in charge. Another problem was the maintenance of the army and the navy, which cost Russia over 40% of the government's annual expenditure. Many of the European countries around Russia were moving towards a constitutional democracy. This put major stress on the Tsar to do the same. Instead, he decided to rally around the slogan, Autocracy, Orthodoxy and Nationality. There were many economic and financial problems. For one, Peter and Catherine the Great were trying to modernise Russia, but had little success. Russia also suffered from hard winters, short growing opportunities and backward farming methods. When they had bad harvests, it meant that the poor suffered. Transport was hard as well, since there was never a port that was completely ice-free throughout the whole year, which made it hard to trade. In 1855, Britain was producing ten times more pig iron, and Australia was producing more cast iron. The Russians concentrated on food rather than trying to uplift the economy. There are a series of murders committed on Jews by Christian Russians called pogroms. The Russian government often supported these attacks as they preferred to have the Russians attacking the Jews rather than attacking the government. No other religious groups were treated in the same way by the state. Jews were subject to rigorous controls. Religion restricted the employment of Jews and their living spaces. Although all of these subjects caused problems, it also made many opportunities. The multiple climate throughout Russia meant that there were several exports, and there was an easy access to the sea which made it easy to trade with other countries. The length and width of Russia meant that it was close to the eastern and western world. The royal families were very generous towards the serfs. If they worked in the Tsar household also, they were treated well. In Russia, low class were the serfs, the slaves and peasants, middle class were doctors, lawyers and university teachers, and finally the upper class were the royal family, the Tsar. There are over 200 nationalities in Russia and 100 different languages spoken. This is obviously good because it displays a huge diversity, but then it creates problems for the Tsar as these people wish to have their own government. The military also made opportunities for Russia. The army was able to successfully keep the opposition to the government to a minimum and other official parties were banned. There were 1,400,000 men in the army in 1855 and it was justified conscription. The Tsar in Russia was very important and well respected. He was known as the Little Father. Foreign observers were very impressed by his reputation. Russia was divided into 50 provinces which were subdivided into 20 districts. This was a very clear structure that was well run.
The population of Russia grew rapidly in the 19th century. It went from 7 million to 126 million. 40% of Russia's export was green, and in 1851 a railway had been built between St. Petersburg and Moscow. The positive sides of religion in Russia were that priests could register births, marriages and deaths. Cockroach Kid Productions. Productions.